Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. Well, let's see. I just put this, this idea just came to me. I was just sitting on the front porch and uh, uh, I don't give this talk unless I get a uh, impulse, uh, an idea that wants to express itself. So uh, I was reading about the uh, difference between Christianity and Buddhism and their idea of uh, uh, original sin or, or the cause of suffering, to put it that way. So Christianity said original sin, right? Adam and Eve did it. And uh, Buddhism says uh, something very similar, but uh, a little more psychological. Uh, and so the, the basic, the, bo both Christianity and Buddhism say the original uh, fault was the turning away from our source. Uh, in Christianity, would be turning away from God. Adam and Eve turned away from God. And uh, in Buddhism, it's turning away from your true nature. So in, in that way, they're the same. And uh, so I like to bring everything, I like to make everything, to, to me, all of these abstractions, all this philosophy, all this religious stuff and all that really has no meaning for me when it comes, when it re relates to everyday mind and everyday situations like our politics today. Um, in France, the... Uh, uh, Le Pen, the nationalists, got defeated, uh, but ours got elected. <laughs> so what is this nationalism? Uh, what, what is it in terms of uh, you and I and our everyday mind? So I put the question up here, why do I suffer? And this is the, this is the question we all, when somebody dies, when our dog dies, when our loved one and our mother dies, when everybody, when I lose my house, my job, I can't get a job, whatever the situation is, there's always a why, why, why is this happening? I've done everything right. It's like Job, you know, I obeyed all the rules and still I suffer. You know, why is that? Uh, this, this, is the, this is the human question. Uh, when you do everything right, you still suffer. They. They did everything wrong and they're not suffering. I did everything right and I suffer. What's going on? So we need to really look at this. And um, so I'll, I'll explain this in terms of uh, uh, Buddhist terms. There's a parallel in Christian terms. Uh, but, the, but turning away from source uh, is ignorance. I ignore. So if I ignore my true nature, I, I turn away from it. And this turning away from true nature creates what Buddha says, describes, is the source of human suffering. And that source is the need to be special. So if I turn away from my true nature, where I am already special, then I turn away and I need to be special. You see that? So if when I, when I turn back and I get in alignment with my true nature or God, I no longer need to be special. But this is not an attainment in Buddhism. So much as it is in Christianity, where I gotta get to this. In other words, it's already there. Buddha nature is already our true nature. So the turning away is a misperception. And that misperception is called ignorance. And uh, so you could say, in comparing the Christian and Buddhist, the original sin uh, is, is this ignorance or turning away. And there is no idea of sin in Buddhism, so it's called ignorance or klesha. Okay, and so this there there is the three the, the the unholy alliance in Buddhism that creates suffering is ignorance that's turning away. 
and desire or craving or greed to be unique and special, and then aggression, aggression against anything that tries to uh, take away my specialness, the enemy. So, and the, the, uh, this, this, while this is, this, this, in, in history, you have the idea or the, that when a people make themselves special, you can say they're chosen. Uh, the, he the ancient, uh, the, the uh, Hebrews did it. Chosen people. That idea was original there in them. The chosen people. So every people become, want to be special. When they want to be special, it's called nationalism. And uh, even in Calvinism, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do remember a few things. And one of them is that it was a, was a religion of, for the elect. In other words, uh, the, the elect are the chosen. They're the ones going to heaven. They're the saved ones. Even, uh, evangelicals get into this. Religion is when you want to be saved. If you're saved, you're special. If you're special, uh, you've got a good covenant with God, and other people don't. So you're special. You're like the good son, uh, the good child, and the other one is the bad child. You know, father doesn't like him. Uh, father likes me. You know, so I'm special. Uh, so this need to be special, this desire to be special, to be the elect. Um, and in Calvinism, this was connected up with, the, how, do you, how do you know when somebody's the elect? Well, if they're wealthy and successful, that's obvious that they're the elect. So then the way you know you're the elect or chosen, if you're wealthy. So... I got to thinking about uh, Trump, you know, and when you look at uh, not what he says, but what he does, who, who has he put in his cabinet? Who is running the government? But the, the wealthy. And the policies he's passing, even though he says he's passing them for the people, are really helping the wealthy and increasing the wealth. So the wealthy... In Trump's mythology, the biz, the big corporations, the the maker, the and the Anne Rand philosophy, the makers, the doers, and the makers, are the elect, and they are the elect and the chosen ones, who, by their ability to make money, and be the elect, make them eligible to govern. So it's governed by the wealthy wise. And this goes back to Plato, actually. <laughs> well, Plato in the Republic, when he finally weighing democracy and all the different forms of government, said the best form would be ruled by the philosopher king, uh, the wise king. or the. Uh, so if you believe that the wealthy person is the wise one because he made all that money, he must be pretty smart then the, he would be the best ruler, you see. So this is kind of like this, this uh, uh, I would say Trumpism is kind of like a new Calvinism in the sense that the, it's ruled by the wealthy. And of course, uh, Bernie Sanders' whole uh, uh, campaign, his whole message is that we are ruled by the wealthy and they've got all the money. <laughs> You see, so we're so it's kind of like this pyramid here with the people down here and the uh, wealthy up here, and it's kind of like the cream up here, right? The cream goes to the top of the bottle, so the cream is ruling the rest of the milk, and this is kind of like skim down here. Okay, so you got the cream at the top and the skim down here. And that was the whole message and why it was so resonating uh, with, with Sanders. It's because that was his specific uh, message and uh, uh, he, he was like a prophet. You know, in the sense Sanders was coming, was, coming, was, uh, was speaking as the prophet uh, in the Bible who warns of the hypocrites. Uh, the uh, 
ruled by the elect, by the few. So anyway, I really just, uh, uh, so this nationalism is like a national ego. So those that, that uh, uh, so this, you know, on an individual level, these three, ignorance, desire, and aggression, the unholy alliance create the conditions for our sense of specialness, and that's what an ego is defined as. An ego is a sense of being separate and, and the need to be special, uh, the need to be uh, number one, the need to be special, uh, unique, uh, and, and also eternally unique, at the center. Uh, the ego basically is at the center. Everything, it's, it's kind of like the uh, wheel with the spoke, so everything goes, everything is referenced to me. What about me? What about me, you see, is the, kind of like the sense we get about the, the separate sense of self that's that's the important one, the special one, the chosen one. So this is this is the 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 dy the, the dynamics of the of our individual condition, and nationalism uh, is a condition of the of, of a nation. When when nationalism takes over, it's like a national ego. Uh, the defeat of uh, Le Pen in France was the defeat of the, and this is rather unique here because uh, the, the French want to preserve their unique culture and uh, it's, being in, it's being eroded by immigration. So the tendency is here to create a wall and to lock out the, the invaders. This is aggression. So the, so the, the uh, desire to be unique creates aggression against the other. And this happens because if you take the whole, okay, you take the totality and you carve out a unique place for you and this is me and I, my little, this little unique me then becomes a false idol. A nation can become a false idol. So if I carve out my, to be special, I have to carve it out of the whole. You see, so to be unique or special, I have to take a hunk, I have to take me out of the whole and make me the whole. So now this becomes the whole, and this becomes a false, a false idol. A false idol is a part that a part of the whole that is believed to be the whole. So it's a false idol. So this creates a division. And it creates aggression against, so the, the, the forces at work here is that when you, take, when you take a part of the whole and make it into the whole, that which is left out wants to, wants to, to reintegrate. So if you, and this is so obvious in our civil rights struggle, struggle if, you, if, you, if you eliminate the black so that you're just, just the chosen one is the white, and you exclude the black, you see. Well then, but the black is part of the whole too. In other words, the dinner table has salt and pepper on it. So, uh, there is going to be pressure for that which is left out of the whole to become part of the whole. And so then you create this aggression against the whole that's trying to reintegrate itself because you have segregated the whole into two parts. I don't know, I may be getting confusing, but it's, 
Salt and pepper is a good is a good example. If the if the whole is salt and pepper mixed together, and you just start separating, uh, take the pepper over there and salt here, and say we're not going to have pepper is bad. You can't have that. Every it's just salt. But the but the whole is salt and pepper. So the pepper, the whole is going to want to restore unity. And the white perceives that pressure to restore unity as the enemy. So it has to fight the pepper to maintain its and nourish its purity of the whole. But this is a perpetual civil war. And this basically is, is what the world to the ego looks like. The ego to the ego, the world is constantly trying to take away its special position, its specialness, you see. So it, we're always at war with the world that tries to take away our specialness, and we're constantly saying, well, why me? I'm, you know, why? So this creates an ego as a victim, uh, an ego sense that uh, the world is against me, and that, you know, nothing ever goes right for me. Why, you know, uh, why can't I get a break? Uh, why can't the lights be green for me, you see? Anyway, I, this has been kind of wandering, and, uh, but I just uh, was one reflecting on this rise of nationalism, uh, the idea when you have nationalism, you also have the idea of purity. This was best example by uh, uh, Nazism and the purity of the Aryan race. So once you have that idea of purity and specialness and the elect, then you have to get the pepper out. So you just have salt. So then you, so for Hitler it was the Jews. You had to get them out. Uh, and the gypsies and the communists, you see. Uh, so they were all uh, not just walled out, but exterminated. <laughs> there was an interesting thing on 60 Minutes last night where the last prosecutor of the Nuremberg trials and he prosecuted the SS uh, squads that went behind the army and, uh, and murdered millions of uh, people in Russia uh, uh, by collecting them up and shooting them in ditches. So this, this idea of nationalism, purity, creates walls to keep the pure in. And Trumpism basically was built on that idea of creating a wall to keep the Americans in and the non-Americans out. And if you look back, Trump began his whole uh, campaign on that idea of the wall and keeping Obama out. Uh, keeping Obama out because he was not pure. He was illegal. He was not authentic. Anybody who was not uh, pure or authentic uh, get out. Get out of the room. Get out. Get them out, you see. This, this place is for us. And uh, who is us? Well, they're, they're ruled by the wealthy us because they're the smartest people because obviously they made all that money. Just like me, says Trump. <laughs> so the Trump Tower is where the cream is and it's ruled by uh, what I call the what I would call the new Calvinism, the new elect. So, anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I always uh, get uh, uh, get get an impulse or get get a jolt when these uh, these uh, rather abstract ideas become real and given flesh and blood in my life and in our national life right now and what's going on. So, thanks for dropping in and I'll see you next time.